everybody. Uh, so I'm really happy to have Salome here. She's someone that I personally look up to a lot and think is just like truly an amazing person and the way that she um, works with technology and community outreach and social justice. And um, I think she's really just an inspiring person. So I'm excited to have her here to talk to all of you. Um, Salome, please take it away. Yeah, thank you so much for, for having me. And I think um, today I'm just going to go through a couple of my past projects and tell you about a space um, I've been building with a group of friends and artists in, in Brooklyn. Um, so I'll just dive right into it so if we can have some time for Q&A at the end. Okay, so let me share my screen. Hmm. Okay, I think I, it's asking me to rejoin. So I'm gonna. Cool, okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. All right, so, um, let's see. Cool, okay. So this is a project I started in 2014 called Crown Heights Mike. It's a collaboratively built pirate radio station based in Crown Heights in Brooklyn. Uh, and this is a little transmitter and it runs on an FM dial and it has about a half a mile radius. Um, so local residents and business owners could sign up for a time slot. Uh, and you know, there would be these flyers around, so you just call this number, sign up for a slot. And, and the only rule was that you had to do your show in the neighborhood and I would pass off this radio setup to you. And so this is um, Fahid, he owns a general store in the neighborhood. He got really, really into the show. He had like all this, um, all this like musical, all these instruments underneath his cash register that I never knew. So then he would like play during his free times, but he got so into the radio show that he like started advertising his sets um, in front of the store. And so my love for radio later grew into me working with Houston, uh, Texas-based artist collective Odebanga Jones and Associates on this project called OJBK FM. And so I outfitted this like beautiful 1959 uh, cotton candy pink Cadillac with a, a web radio server. Um, and we hosted shows in Houston and Bedside, Brooklyn, where, I fr where I'm from, where I live. Um, and the show just, uh, the car would like move around the country. And our shows ranged from like hyper local black history lessons to live DJ sets and performances. We collected the kind of like regional and localized black history lessons that you maybe don't see in your school te textbooks, right? They're very specific to neighborhood. And it made uh, public radio truly public. Uh, you know, people from on the street could come up and just get on the mic and be immediately broadcasted to. Um, the web, this web radio. Here's another project I worked on through um, a residency at the New Museum in New York uh, with a group of artists. Uh, I worked with Ali Rosa Salas, who's a curator and dancer, and Crybaby Cozy, who's a choreographer and dancer. Uh, so in the summer of 2012, uh, DJ Bauer came out with this song called Harlem Shake, which prompted people to make viral videos like these. And while they maybe seem fun, what they really did was erase the original Harlem Shake dance from the internet. Um, so you'd have to go pages and pages into a YouTube search before you could find the original Harlem Shake dance, which was born in Harlem, New York. Um, and so we brought a bunch of dancers, light feet dancers, into the museum and tracked their shoulder movements while, were they, while they were doing the original dance form and used this as data 
for um, this game we developed called the Level Up, which used a hack to connect. So it was like a DDR style game or, you know, one of these dance style video games where you're looking into a camera and you're following the movements and then you're, you're given a score. So here are just some of the dancers doing the original dance. Um, and so this is the game and it's like final install. So there's a giant pro projection of the game. You can see the connect right underneath the screen. There's this big red inviting button on the left hand side that when you when you push down on it, it launches you into a, a minute long instructional round with Crybaby Cozy, where you learn the three fundamentals of the game. Uh, you learn what your feet should be doing, your shoulders, just overall body work. And then you go into a battle round against one of the dancers and I can, I, almost everyone lost. <laughs> I can tell you that. It's, um, so the main project I wanna tell you about is um, EOP repository, but I will say just as we, we talk about this work, you know, this is kind of like the question that centers most of my artistic practice. How are cultural art artifacts recorded, preserved, and celebrated? Um, so um, before we talk about EOP repository, I thought it was like important to talk a little bit about the history of sharing African diasporic art and culture in the United States. So I'm sure many of you have been to museums and you've seen that museums have robust collections of artifacts from uh, all over the world, but also the continent, right? And when you see these objects, um, there's a little bit of, not a little bit, there is an erasure that happens. And so before, institutions were collecting objects, they were collecting people. So this is Oda Benga, a Congolese man who was seized by slave traders in the early 1900s to be exhibited in the St. Louis World Fair. And later he was sold to the Bronx, uh, the Bronx Zoo's monkey house in New York. And so, uh, you know, this is not history that is that far, you know, far back. And even earlier than that, there was Sarji Bartman, who was one of two South African women who were um, exhibited as freak show attractions across Europe under the name Hot and Top Venus. And even when we talk about African diasporic objects, right, or artifacts, the things we see in the museums, the museums do have robust collections, but the credit line is usually a nod to how the object was acquired, right? It doesn't tell you anything about the artist, it tells you about like who bought it, who owns it, right? Which isn't like here you see the credit line is the Rockefeller Memorial Collection. And when we zoom out even farther to so how contemporary culture is represented and shared, we all live on the internet, we see this, we, <laughs> you all know about cultural appropriation, right? There's a similar narrative of seizure and erasure that exists. Um, and these constitute serious um, issues of black artistic representation and cultural representation. So as a way to address some of these things, um, my friend Ayodemola Okunsunde, who's another artist, we came together to start this project called Iapa Repository. So this project is a resource library that exists in a future and houses a collection of art and artifacts made by and for people of African descent. Um, and so everyone always asks, what, what is the name Iapa Repository? Where does that come from? It's named after Lilith Iapa, who's a central character in Octavia Butler's Xenogenesis trilo trilogy. Octavia Butler is my favorite science uh, sci-fi writer. And so if you haven't read anything about Oct Octavia Butler, I highly suggest. Um, so the repository has four main divisions. Uh, and they all require some level of participation to create. And it happens through a workshop where as a participant, you're given these set of cards um, that help you determine like what kind of artifact to design. So if you were, to, if you were given this set of cards, you would have to design um, some kind of revolutionary political tool that incorporates changing color. And then you draw it on this very official document that then gets preserved and archived in our um, manuscript division. And so we've hosted workshops on the street in our workshop. We've partnered, partnered um, oh, this is funny, when we've done on the street workshops, 
Io dresses up like an Afronaut so we can like barter selfies with a, 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 an Afronaut for artifact ideas. Uh, we've also partnered with community-driven organizations and universities and museums to host us. Um, for us in our work, it's, um, it's important to make unlikely partnerships to be able to share and leverage resources. So um, a lot of the pictures that you're seeing now come from a partnership we developed between the Carnegie Mellon University robotics students and August Wilson Center in Pittsburgh, which is a historically black like legacy arts institution. So, you know, bringing tech out outside of like technology spaces, right? Bringing them to community spaces. Um, so through the August Wilson Center lab, we tweaked our workshop and we added three more um, tracks to make more time for exposure uh, and engagement with new technology. So we have uh, one workshop track that asks participants to rapid prototype their artifact ideas using basic electronic components, things like microcontrollers, LEDs, servo motors, uh, buzzers, and so they like build their artifact to some degree. Uh, we also have a VR engineering track where participants uh, put on a headset and um, sketch their artifact in 3D space, and it's most people's time first times in um, VR. So it's also a great opportunity to just get immediate exposure and begin to ask questions about this new tool. Uh, and we also have a third track for digital fabrication where we show participants how to uh, laser cut or 3D print some aspect of their artifact design. So just quickly, I'm gonna show you a couple of things that have come out of our workshops. So here is um, a bodysuit uh, that gives you the calming sensation of being underwater. It's a therapeutic tool for treating people with water-related trauma. So the person who drew this in our workshop was thinking about um, the transatlantic slave trade experience and what Black people's relationship to water can be, uh, might be. And so here's a suit fully realized. Um, we try to make it as close to possible as what the person drew during the workshop. And then with each one of the artifacts, um, we try to make films so you can kind of see them in motion. So there's water that pumps, uh, that is being pumped around all of the limbs at each one of these black cuffs at the joints. Um, there's our, uh, vibration motors that are synced to tidal patterns of the Atlantic Ocean. So you get this like nice wave-like vibration along your body. It's like meant to be calming. Okay, another artifact. These are affirmation pills. It's prescribed or maybe like vitamin-like supplement that when taken gives you a specialized black history lesson. So this participant was thinking like, wouldn't it be great if you could just like give someone a, 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 a vitamin and they just like understand your cultural experience? Like they just get the history all in a tiny package. And so here is like the history of civil rights in a vitamin the history of rock and roll or transatlantic slave trade in a vitamin, right? That you could just give someone. And so here are the pills. And so they're, uh, they're encased um, in this acrylic and they have these little screens that give you like the prescription notes so you can learn more about what the lesson is about your, that you're about to receive when you take the pill. Um, here's one last artifact example. Um, you know when you place the seashell to your ear and you can hear the ocean? This participant played with, the, with that idea and developed what she called Mother Radio, a music streaming channel that plays music and sounds by women and friends, femmes across the diaspora. So she, wanted, she was thinking deeply about women's contribution to sound production and music and wanted to like celebrate it across time and country. So here's the shell. And so when you actually do pick it up to your ear, there's like, um, it's like live streaming music from playlists that we're creating. And then we've also made a film 
uh, with this artifact, and here's a still from it. And then our last division of EOPA repository is what we call the rare media division. So in the process of building out all of, all of these artifacts, um, we've done tons of reading. We've listened to so many things in our studio. Um, we're looking at so many images. So we collect all the things from our process and we uh, put it in our rare media division. So if you bring a USB, it's like a dead drop library. If you bring a USB stick or we can provide one for you, you just insert it here and it, all the stuff, all the JPEGs, PDFs, et cetera, just get dumped on that USB stick for you. And then here are just some install shots of um, the Yopper repository. When we exhibit the work, you see like the giant films in the background. You see the finished artifacts here. Like you see the plants in the skirt. And in the middle is like active workspace. This is where people are continuing to add to Yopper repository, drawing new artifact ideas, or they're doing the VR or the 3D printing or laser cutting. Like everything happens in the middle space. So it's meant to be active. And then just very quickly, I was going to tell you about um, this project power plant. It's an artist built interest driven school and lab in Brooklyn. All the classes are pitched and taught by artists and all the classes are selected by what what we hear our neighbors say they want and need. And for um, Let's see if I have this picture. So this was like an old beauty salon in Brooklyn that was like up for rent. And so a group of us just kind of like took it over and it had like bright orange walls and it had Rihanna on the awning outside. And so we, there's in New York, we have this thing called materials for the arts where um, you can get materials for free. So we would go like shopping there every weekend and like collected tiles, collected tables, collected everything. So everything was made for almost free. Um, but we rebuilt the studio to look like this lab. Um, and our classes range from intro to 3D modeling, to how to design a logo, to camera great basics. Our most popular classes are the intros to like Ableton and CDJs that are taught by local DJs and musicians. Um, we also offer a suite of practical arts training uh, for young artists that have become really popular. So things like legal basics for artists or how to pitch a project. Um, so you can kind of see people in this space. We also have a monthly residency program where artists are working with new tools uh, and they host exhibitions and shows. You can see that here. We also partner um, with uh, teens in the neighborhood to take over our space. So here's a collaboration we did with the Parsons Scholars Program at the new school. And in just three weeks, these, this group of teens uh, planned an event series, an exhibition, a panel on creative entrepreneurship for their peers. They hosted a rap show, a poetry night, like a dinner. It was, they like completely took over the space. And then we've, uh, we've also done pop-up um, workshops in other people's spaces. So this is something we did at this space called Pioneer Works um, and it's called Ableton Live Live. So we synced all of the computers in this circle and routed them through the same mixer so all the participants participants could build on the same beat in Ableton. So think of it as like an electronic music circle, like everyone is collectively adding to the same beat. And then I'm gonna close here because I wanna make sure we have time for questions, but that's a sense of the space. And you know, since everything is closed and we're doing everything remotely, Power Plan is also is moving digital and we've, we're partnering with a bunch of um, other small arts and technology groups across the country right now. Uh, there's a, about a group of 10 of us that are from like LA, the Bay, Detroit, and New York that are coming together to do like a 10 week series for teens. So I can maybe share more information about that once that goes live, but it's totally free to join in and participate. And we'll, we're doing all sorts of weird art tech experiments. <laughs> so would love to have you if you're interested. So I'll close there. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Salome. Um, so I saw we do have um, a question that comes in and I hope that we get a few more that roll in maybe as you're answering this first one. Um, uh, Mindy wanted to ask about um, more about why you're calling the, um, in the upper repository, why do you call those things artifacts? And like, what's the, what's like the goal when you are creating them? Mm -hmm. That's such a good question. Um, 
I think we, we've called them artifacts because there's, um, in most speculative work or science fiction work, it gives you an opportunity to talk about current injustices, right? Or current ideas you have, right? And so um, when we call them artifacts, it removes any sort of pressure for someone to talk about or feel the need to talk about what is, um, what they're finding challenging in this moment, right? And so what we learn is from our workshops, we invite people to talk about the future. They're really telling us about the things that they feel like need to change right now, you know? Um, sorry, uh, I, I have a question. Uh, not really a question, more of a statement. So I'm from Bed-Stuy as well. Um, I lived there until I was 10 years old. I, I resonate with a lot of this because um, I also just recently learned that a lot of the African history um, has been has been erased. There is that sense of erasure um, going on in, in the history, uh, at least the American history. Um, and I thought it was um, very significant, and I thought it was a very important topic. So I, I resonated with the idea um, more so foundationally. Where did the um, original organization originate from or begin? The Upper Repository, or which which organization? Mm, which one, which one do you consider to be, um, like, I, w I don't want to say significant to you, because I'm sure they're both significant to you, but yeah. more so, like, which one do you have more history with? Yeah, I, well, so I can tell you, so, like, Power Plant, the last bit of what I showed you is, like, the, the teen digital art space, like, that space is a real organization. It's a 501c3. We have like, we follow all of those, you know, protocols. But Iapo Repository, the, the project that is like about artifacts and, you know, thinking about the future, that is not a real organization. It's like two artists who have come together, but we use um, the fiction of an, of an institution, right, to, to kind of hold, to act as a container for all of these ideas, right? Like, I, I think that there is um there's like that's that's what makes it for us i think a little playful there's some humor right that we're this like this organization from the future that has like come back to ask you like to help us you know collect and unearth artifacts from the future um it just adds to the playfulness and i think makes people feel comfortable in um participating uh my, my brother still lives in brooklyn um around actually near crown heights so um i was um i'm sure i can find like more information on your website but i would love to send that to him and i would love to also stop by when i get the opportunity to you know go back to new york when there's yeah there. yeah we would love to have you and when we're allowed to be open again <laughs> yeah but yeah i would love to stop by and make some art because i like making art and this, this is a cool idea very 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 impressive thank you i think if there's are there any other questions that we want to bring up before we got to end? No? Are we inspired? I'm inspired. <laughs> Salome, thank you so much. Um, I would love to, the, um, the things you were talking about sharing, I would love to, to take those and share them. And if anyone, there might be a couple questions that come in kind of after we finish. Is it okay if I send those to you? Of course, yeah, okay. I'm happy to. Like, you can also share my contact with anyone if you want to email me separately and just um, continue to have a conversation. I'm happy to do that. Awesome. Thank you so much. It was really great to have you here. Thank you. See you in touch soon. Have a good Bye. Day. Bye.